Greetings. Welcome to this call. We have rabbis all across the uh, country uh, committed to passing comprehensive immigration reform. We're honored to have with us uh, today Ileana Ross Layton, uh, a well-known uh, leader in the Congress on so many issues of concern to our community. Israel has had no better friend than you are, Congresswoman. I, we're so grateful for your leadership. Your uh, outspoken leadership on this issue is beginning to change uh, the uh, debate. So we're really honored to have you with us, and uh, I'm introducing you, although you can't see them as they can see you, um, uh, rabbis all across the United States and some of the largest synagogues, all committed to social justice and committed to uh, passing comprehensive immigration reform. Congresswoman Ileana ross -Layton. Well, thank you uh, very much. I am thrilled and honored, great privilege to uh, to have the opportunity to speak to uh, to all of you. And I want to first congratulate uh, you as individuals and as a group because you have been at the at the forefront of uh, all the issues related to social justice, uh, to fair immigration reform, to changes that, that can help uh, the most vulnerable in our society. And that's what uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, this center has been known for. That's what this organization has been known for. That's why you were created. So you have a long and uh, rich history of uh, protecting uh, those uh, most vulnerable in our society. And when we talk about fixing this broken immigration system, certainly we're talking about those uh, most vulnerable because we see it in, uh, in major cities and in small towns that uh, uh, many times uh, young girls and, and women who don't have protected status, immigration status, are trafficked. They're victims of, uh, of uh, sexual exploitation. Uh, they fear that they have no voice. Uh, they're exploited by um, their uh, so-called owners almost. They feel like they are entrapped in this modern day slavery. So uh, also immigration reform is very much tied to uh, domestic violence. We see uh, uh, we held a, a, a briefing just this week where we, we heard from many uh, women who have been victims of domestic violence, but because they don't have uh, the immigration status, they are afraid to come out and, and call out their abusers. So uh, these folks really need help, and, uh, and I thank you for your long and rich history of, of helping, helping those, uh, uh, those folks. Uh, I think that we have a real opportunity. I have not thrown in the towel. I think that we still have uh, many days left in our legislative session, even this year, uh, to fix a broken immigration system. And there's certain things that I always say when I talk about immigration that most people can agree on, that it is a broken system, that it doesn't serve neither those who have been playing by the rules nor those who have tried to play by the rules but have been unable to. Um, and that uh, to accept the immigration system as it is now with no changes is in fact uh, agreeing to amnesty. Those voices who are so strongly against amnesty, uh, they are actually in, uh, in accepting amnesty by not correcting the injustice that are, that, are, uh, that are in place now because those folks are not going to go back to their uh, home countries. They're going to stay here. We need to um, fix those problems and create a framework for that uh, so that people, hardworking people, uh, can come out of shadows, can work legally, pay the fines. And if you've read any of the immigration bills that have been put forth, whether as Republicans or Democrats, you will see that it is to become a legal resident and then to have the pathway to citizenship. It takes a long time. It is not something that's easy to achieve. So people who read the bill uh, will see how difficult it is. And if you go through it with them, they will realize that. Let me just take a pause here because I no longer see you. So I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you absolutely clearly. This is coming across quite well. Okay, so so if you look at the bills, you will see that they have to pay a hefty fine. Uh, they have to wait in a long line. They don't get in front of anyone who has been here already playing by the rules. So it's a really fair uh, legislation, no matter which one you look at. Uh, when people read it, they say, wow, this really is addressing this issue in a comprehensive way and in a, in, in a very realistic way. 
So we've got to reach across the aisle, work with both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats. Don't make this a partisan issue, just like we try so hard to not make Israel a partisan issue. So should we on immigration, because we're not going to be able to make this dream a reality unless we get Republicans and Democrats uh, reaching across the aisle. They were able to do that in the Senate. Senate rules are different than the House rules. So we know in the House, they're not going to take up the Senate bill. We hope that we will pass individual bills and then get into a conference committee, and we hope that we will be able to, uh, to pass a bill that way. Eric Cantor has a very good bill. It's not a perfect bill, but it's a start. It's called the Kids Act, and it's dealing with the dreamers, the young people who came here when they were very young. Uh, now, many of the immigration activists who are or very involved in this will tell you that's not enough. Well, I understand that that's not enough, but we should try to do something. It's better than not doing anything. So we can't let, you know, what, what that saying always says, that the, the, the possible get into the whatever that phrase is in the, in the way of, uh, of the good. This is achievable, and, and I hope that Eric Cantor proposes his bill, and, uh, and I hope that we're able to pass it. It's one step in a big journey but it's a beginning. But let me hear from you. Well, uh, I thank you. And indeed, we shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. You're absolutely right. There you go. But we do want to get as uh, you know, broad a bill as possible. Tell us, um, I, I take it Eric Cantor's bill would take kind of the DREAMer Act and, and apply it to younger kids um, uh, as well more uh, comprehensively. Um, uh, here, But tell us in terms of comprehensive reform, what are the arguments for your colleagues that you think are going to be the, the most effective ones that our rabbis and the, the lay leaders with connections with the um, uh, representatives involved uh, should be making? Well, I think that we should say, uh, look at the bills that, we're, that, that are being proposed. Look at the Senate bill. Uh, and, and that is a very tough bill. You have to wait in a long line. Don't skip over anyone. You wait a long time to legalize your status. Then after you're a legal resident, after you pay the fines and pay the back taxes, then you have to wait a whole lot of years again to become a citizen. So people have this feeling that uh, when we pass this bill, we're giving out citizenship forms and, and passports, and that is not the case. So the first, the first thing that we have to do is to convince our colleagues, Democrats and Republicans, that this is not conferring automatic citizenship nor automatic residency on anyone because if you're a criminal uh, if you have uh, done something that is a, a bad mark on, on your character you will not be able to uh, uh, to take advantage of this generous law you will be deported and that's something that people have to know they're thinking in th that everybody's going to be able to legalize their status and that and we're giving grant we're giving uh, citizenship granting them as if we were giving away M&Ms. It's a tough bill. It's a fair bill. I know we're not going to take it up, but in terms of comprehensive nature, that bill is a good example of what we could we could see uh, in in the future. And I hope that it will be in the near future. Am I correct in understanding on the House side um, that would be HR 15, which takes kind of the Senate bill puts tougher border protections in that is important to a number of your colleagues. It has your support. It has two of your Republican colleagues from uh, California, uh, Denham and Valadeo as well um, on the bill. And if there's any effort on comprehensive reform, it would be around HR 15 uh, here. But you want, you're saying we should be open to taking pieces if we can get some pieces right now um, as well. That's right. You can put all of your energies in, the, in a bill, H.R. 15, that I'm a co-sponsor for. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but, but if we're dealing with, with the political realities, the Speaker Boehner has said from day one that he will not deal with immigration in a comprehensive way, even before H.R. 15 was hatched. This is a, a fairly new bill. Uh, even before that, uh, Speaker Boehner said, we are going to do this bill by bill. And he said that even before uh, the Senate passed their bill. So it is not a reaction to H.R. 15. It's not a reaction to the Senate bill. So always it was going to be bill by bill. So we should look at each bill that, he, that they are proposing and, and put pressure on them to get something on the floor because uh, the days are going by. I don't think it's a law's cause. I think that we can still 
pass something and we want to go into a conference uh, with the Senate. And, uh, and I'm not saying that you should not put your attention on, on HR 15. Go ahead and do so. But understand that as you do so, the speaker has said he will not consider that bill. And, and uh, that's a political reality. So we hope that we can start with smaller bills like Eric Cantor's bill. And those bills will be lobbied, the, the immigrant lobby, the lobbyist will be against them because I realize that they want, they want a very good bill, a comprehensive bill, but um, we have to deal with the cards we're dealt. I really uh, appreciate your guidance. Look, I know this is a busy day. You've been very generous with your uh, time and your guidance for us, exactly what we were hoping for. So I want to thank you and your staff over no, the years. thank you. you know, but going let me tell you, your leadership and, and the way that you've been working on this issue, uh, hats off to you. We need more level-headed, compassionate uh, folks who really are in the front lines. You see these uh, constituents to us, but congregants to you. And, uh, and, and you are there dealing with all the issues related to social justice. So I thank you for a long tradition of, of helping uh, those who are less fortunate. We are that, blessed that you are around. That means a lot to all of the people who will be looking at this. Um, we look forward to working together with you. Take care. Thank you, rabbis. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be part of this call. Thank Bye -bye. you. Sorry about the technical uh, problem here. I know some of you had frozen computers in this, and we've been straightening it out um, uh, here. So I just want to be sure that I'm live with uh, people. Are you guys seeing this um, uh, here? Is whoever you were talking to seeing this? Yes. Um, here, Deborah? Yeah? OK. Yes, all right. So we're back live, and I do apologize for that. Really do appreciate Eliana Ross Layton's uh, involvement here. It was clear she feels very strongly, not just about the issue, but about our involvement in it, um, and recognizes that uh, we're exactly the kind of group that has um, uh, diverse uh, populations in our uh, in our congregations that can make a, really make a difference. Um, this is. This is uh, clearly uh, a propitious time to be dealing with it. We have uh, a lot of uh, advocates for this pushing for uh, a vote on comprehensive immigration reform in the form of H.R. 15 um, that uh, we're trying to do before Congress recesses in, uh, for the Christmas and winter recess, but if not, soon after when we, um, uh, when we come back. Um, that will take a lot of work on our part and getting people to reach out to Republicans in our congregation, uh, people who have personal connections, whatever party they may be, they may have personal connections with a number of these Republicans and with swing Democrats. We're going to be posting a list that will be available to you um, uh, and we'll follow up with an email to uh, explain how to access it. Um, we'll be sending out information of the swing list. Uh, who are the targeted Republicans we have, the ones that we think are gettable on this bill because they've talked in favor of comprehensive immigration reform, even though they haven't yet uh, lined up as uh, the congresswoman has done be, uh, behind these bills, or because they have not declared opposition uh, to the bill. You'll see both categories of those people. And uh, we really need you to focus on them. Any of you who have constituents that cross over um, those congressional districts um, uh, to write. And frankly, it doesn't hurt for people to be hearing from uh, people outside their districts as well on these issues. Um, I think people know that there is the rabbis only section of the uh, website at the rack. I think you all know how to access it if you don't just send us an email. Um, you'll find sermons and materials, sample sermons um, uh, that you can draw from and materials to use. This is, of course, with the beginning of Sipor Yosef, um, uh, the beginning of a period of time when the immigration story of the Jewish people out of the land of Israel um, it begins this long history. When we move to uh, Egypt and the center of Jewish life moves to uh, Egypt for a long period of time and then the exodus back, um, uh, it's the beginning of the story of the dispersion of the Jewish people, of centers of Jewish life all across the uh, globe, um, and uh, therefore a fitting time to raise the immigration uh, issues. I'll just also point out, as just a, a minor drosh point here, that until this moment in the story of Genesis, God is the one who engages 
directly with all the key protagonists, with uh, Adam and Eve, with uh, uh, Abel, with Noah, with Abraham and Isaac and uh, Jacob. But beginning the story of uh, Joseph, no longer does God interact directly with them in the form of communicating directly with them. Um, it is rather left to human beings to do the things that they do. Uh, Joseph has that dream. Um, it is a dream that uh, changes his life. Um, Jacob has a dream. It's a dream that changes Jacob's life. Um, Joseph is the interpreter of dreams um, uh, here, and that ability to take dreams and apply them to reality is a motif for what we're trying to do always in all of our work, but certainly with the immigration battle um, uh, as well here. And we, um, uh, we really look to you, your engagement, your involvement to get this done. Um, we uh, do oppose the uh, piecemeal approach, the tactical question of whether or not, for instance, when uh, if uh, uh, Eric Cantor gets the kids' uh, bill up, um, what we'll do on that, we'll cross that path when we get to it. There may be pieces of the bill that we think are not so significant that by voting for them, it will damn the opportunity of a vote for a comprehensive bill that includes a pathway to citizenship. We do feel that about votes on border uh, provisions alone. We think if the border provisions uh, pass, and the only way that they can get enhanced border provisions is not by is by another route than voting for comprehensive reform that will never get to comprehensive reform. That may not be true with some of the other piecemeal approaches. We'll pass it. We'll uh, uh, offer our guidance on that to you as they come about. But in general, we're opposed to piecemeal approaches, um, and you should make that clear to your representatives and your uh, communities that piecemeal approaches just won't result in final votes on the core issue of comprehensive immigration reform and protection for undocumented immigrants, 11 and a half million of them all across the country. That in the end is what we need. We need a humane system of a pathway to citizenship, family reunification, um, letting people be legalized so they can come out of the shadows in any kind of piecemeal vote that distracts from that or undercuts that. Um, uh, really is not a healthy approach and we urge you to um, uh, convey that to your members and as I said piece by piece if it actually comes up with a vote will offer guidance at that uh, at that period of time so this is really the time to uh, uh, be out front on it. This will play a major role at the URJ Biennial. There'll be several sessions on uh, immigration reform. Um, we'll be asking people to write in at that time, just to give you a heads up. There are three bills we're going to ask the attendees to write in on and go home and get people to write in on. Um, one is the House vote on immigration reform. Um, uh, the second is the Senate vote on uh, a revote on gun control legislation, we'll be doing that the day before um, the Newtown um, the Newtown uh, anniversary, uh, an anniversary of sadness for all Americans. And uh, the third is the uh, passage ratification by the Senate of the Covenant for the rights of um, and uh, of people with disabilities. So uh, those three will be major foci of our work at the biennial. But immigration reform is for our movement the major priority, the one we're most urgently focused on um, uh, across the board. We saw in California the difference our rabbis um, uh, could make in getting the trust bill uh, passed and the rabbis played a pivotal role in that uh, in that regard. We can do that all across the uh, country. Um, uh, so with that, I don't think we have the ability to do questions and answers. Am I correct? Yeah. Um, I hear it. So let me leave it at that and know that um, we will be available um, uh, to answer any questions, both the staff at the RAC and everyone involved in rabbis organizing rabbis. That is a driving force in this campaign that brings together the CCAR, just congregations, and the RAC. Um, and you're all involved with that, and that should be a badge of honor um, uh, to you. This is a crossroads for our country. We've really got to be able to um, uh, fulfill that dream of making immigration reform a reality for everyone. Um, so with that, uh, I, uh, we have Thanksgiving and Hanukkah uh, coming up. So let me wish you a Chag Sameach on uh, both. And I hope uh, at the end of this battle that there'll be another kind of Thanksgiving and another kind of light of freedom in this country um, uh, that will be transformative to our nation and to the millions of people who need our help. Thank you all.